no surprise there. This is drive, manual, one, two, one, two. This is an Infiniti FX50, and today we're going to talk about the gear shift pattern. Now, this is a vehicle made by Nissan. It's a rear wheel drive based vehicle, seven speed automatic transmission, and it's shiftable. So the conventional automatic transmissions had the layout as park, reverse, neutral, drive, and then the older ones had three, two, one. Some of them had J shifters and things like that. But in a vehicle like this, the shiftable one, it stops at D and then goes to this side. This is the manual side. Now, let me show you what that looks like on the gauge cluster. Park, reverse, neutral, drive i cannot go any lower that's that's locked but if i go to the side like that what i get is drive sport some of them do not really say drive sport some of them just go straight to a number like one so this is the manual or the shiftable mode and some of them the older ones would allow you to go up push it up till whatever number you please but with these ones they stay at a lower gear and then when you start driving and the vehicle feels like you have achieved a speed that is worthy of shifting, you're allowed to shift. That's what's happening right now, just shifting. Well, have you ever wondered why the gear selector behaves the way it does? In that, if you have it in park, you cannot move it anywhere else until you have your foot on the brake and you can do it rather freely because I can't just move it I have to push that trigger in and when I have it in in reverse I can move it from there to neutral pretty freely neutral to drive pretty freely drive to neutral freely neutral to reverse no I need to push this again reverse to park I need to push this again well I have asked myself these questions and I have an answer the answer lies here. This is an Infiniti M56, but like I said earlier, these rear wheel drive based vehicles from Nissan are set up pretty much the same way. And if you look at the shift pattern, it looks very similar to the FX50, does it not? Okay, now I want you to take my word for it that on this shift knob or gear knob, that this trigger that we push here, right, goes backwards, but the way it actuates is by pushing something down. That's how it works. Now watch this. Okay. Wide of view. Push in. You see something going down? Okay, good. Now I'm going to strip it just so that you can see things a little better. This is park. This is the end. If you want it to come out of park, I have a different video talking about this, but there's something called a shift lock. And this is where the shift lock is. This thing right here. Because the vehicle is dead, you can't get it out of park. But if you push this shift lock, this part right here, if you push that, you can release it. So let me see if we can do this. Shift lock, push down. All right, now that is, that is reverse. Reverse is the one that gets stuck. And then neutral, because neutral can bump into drive and drive can bump into neutral without needing any ex uh, external help. Okay, and if you want to go back to reverse, you do this and push it into the next gear. And if you want to push it into park, push it down again and into the next gear. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much well understood. No surprise there. This is drive, manual, one, two, one, two. Now, the reason I brought you all here today is so that we can see what happens inside here. There's actually a physical lockout. So let's watch what happens. See this? It tries to go down from park, but it can't go unless, one, you have power to the vehicle and you have the right key. And when you push the, the brake, well, you have to have the button in the right place, right? But when you do that, once you push the brake, you can release it. So the shift lock, what it does, look at it. Okay, so push this down. Look at the shift lock. It helps it go lower, right? Release it again. Shift lock by itself is useless. Park by itself is useless. But when you do park and shift lock, it helps it drop down. Now, once it dropped down, you can release the shift lock if you want. And this is reverse, okay? 
and once again shift lock is useless by itself once it's in reverse neutral okay once it is in neutral drive and then when you want to push it back that can go no problem and then there's a there's usually a rod over here now this is neutral into reverse it's stuck but if i push this down see that it was getting caught over here it would not allow but now you push it and it gets out of the way now we can push it into reverse same thing is going to happen it's not going to go into neutral but if you push this again out of the way and then it picked up the shift lock thing did you see that let's do that that's magical that's beautiful then i picked it up and that's where the shift lock lock happens it's pretty interesting okay so all the way to the end Nothing magical happens over here. It's just there's contact switches, plus, plus, minus, minus. You could actually wire them backwards if you wanted to, so that your plus would be um, at the bottom and minus at the top if you wish to do that. But yeah, then back out this way so that, as you can see, the rod that was touching it, this rod over here is now out of the way, right? Pretty cool. I guess you can break that off if you want your vehicle to not have it at all. Then, again, we're in drive. Push up. You can always go from drive to neutral with no um, no obstacles. From neutral to reverse. Do that. You can slip backwards, but you can't go forwards, right? You can slip from reverse into neutral, but you cannot slip from neutral into reverse. Then. And that's it that's that's all folks i hope this video helps if if it doesn't really help you solve any world problems at least it satisfies some curiosities you might have had what exactly happens inside a gear box no this is not a gear box a shift assembly gear shift assembly there you go that's that's i think that's a good title for the video